Okay, everybody, it is Thursday night, Thirsty Thursday, and it is officially adult time. Tell the kids to get out of the room, tell them to go play video games or put in your earbuds. This show is so not for kids. Hey now, who's with us? See who's with us? Can't see who's with us. Gotta love this Facebook interface. It is useless. Useless, useless, utterly useless. Cannot wait to get this show over to YouTube. <clears throat> I'm broadcasting. I'm supposed to be able to see everybody's live comments. I can't even see if anybody's on. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's pissing me off too, but here we go. I see Dakota Verbeck cartwheels with us. D Pickard, hey now. Sam Westra, Craig Van Dyke. Uh, Mr. Dave Edwards, Mr. Eskimo Joe, the man, the myth, the legend. Christopher Worden, what's up? Hey buddy, what's up with you? Delilah, Matthew Walter. I just gotta say that again, Delilah. Love that name. Pumpkins with us, all right. Everybody who's, who's with us so far, thanks for joining. You guys definitely make the show more bearable. Whoopi has not yet shown up. I'm not sure what she's doing. She might be inside mixing her drink yet. Uh, I'm not drinking tonight. I should be, but uh, see this whole... Hey, good evening, Alex. Quick, good to see you, buddy. Hey, now. Uh, this whole quarantine thing is making me a little... <clears throat> I'm starting to lose my shit. All right, every day, every day I get uh, notifications about another event that's been canceled. Jen, if you're watching, Whoopi, please get in here. Get that sexy ass in here. Uh, Christopher Warden says, just got done cooking steak and chilling. D. Pickard, where's Whoopi? That's a great question. I I'm assuming she's inside making her drink. She's, uh, <clears throat> this quarantine is killing her too. She's been doing a lot. Don't get me wrong. Um, she's been spending most of her free time exercising like crazy. Jillian Michaels ain't got shit on Wobby. Wobby's about to start her own reality to reality show, whipping motherfuckers into shape. Uh, she's, she's probably doing between, I know she's doing between 10 and 15 miles a day. And I don't even know how many exercises inside, uh, <laughs> I think the fact that she quit smoking and then uh, everything, you know, she's, it's been six months now since she's had a cigarette and then she's got to put up with my ass all day long. Uh, well, actually that's, that's not quite true. She, <laughs> she, uh, not quite all day long. There are things that I leave to do all the time, but uh, yeah, I did get an interesting phone call today. And I thought I guys, I thought I'd play you guys the uh, voicemail on this here. Hold on, I gotta pull up the voicemail. This this kind of scared the hell out of me a little bit. Here you go. This is an automated message from Alberta Health Services for Andrew Theobald, an individual who has tested positive for COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus, has identified you as a close contact. It is imperative that you promptly take the following actions to protect your health and the health of others. Please self-isolate immediately in your home. Limit your contact with other members of your household as much as possible. Do not leave your home under any circumstances. If you are showing symptoms such as sore throat... Really? You're just going to stop playing right in the middle on me? Cough, fever, body aches, shortness of breath. Please call 811 to report your symptoms. You are especially at risk because you have a tiny wiener. It is so small and therefore you will become much sicker than an individual who had all, let's say, even an average sized or slightly below average sized weenie because your weenie is so tiny. The CDC is reporting nearly a 100% death rate for people like you who have small wieners. This is especially troublesome for you because your weenie is the smallest weenie in the whole world. You have a tiny wiener. First off, let me say, uh, my wife obviously talks too much. And so I did what any self-respecting hooligan would do, and I forwarded it to a bunch of hooligans just to see what they'd say. So, of course, Dirty Sam says, uh, what is this obsession with my wiener? 
I have dick pics if you need some, Ray. To which my reply would obviously be, dude, why you got pics of your own dick on your phone? Like, in the realm of creepy shit. Here's creepy shit. Here's that. No, 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 no pics of your own pecker. You're supposed to have pics of... Well, hell, I'd even find it less weird if it was somebody else's pecker. But I digress. It is 2020, and uh, would it be wrong? I, I don't know. I don't know. Whoopi, get out here. I'm dying without you here, baby. So, yeah, uh, it's been every event's canceled <laughs> uh, uh, from now until fucking further notice. I did get out to ride this week. That that's that's a the, the bleak bright spot. I actually put on about 300 miles this week, and uh, I got to take this baby out here. Hold on, uh, right there. Yeah, there she is. That uh, good evening, Justin DeYoung. Good to see you, Christopher Warden. Says send it to me. All right, I'll send that over to you here in a few minutes, buddy. Um, so yeah, I got holy shit. That's a big spider crawling across my desk. Um, so yeah, I got to get out and get a couple 300 miles on the bike this week. A couple days ago, the weather was amazing, right? All of you guys here in West Michigan can agree. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> it was pretty awesome weather. Uh, and then yesterday was not horrible. It was all right. We had a good time. I went out. I, I rode for work. Uh, every time I get to ride for work, it's, it's easily 200 miles in a day. It was, got a little chilly. We were supposed to be able to go do a, a birthday drive-by for this this little kid. And I start, you know, I'm keeping an eye on the radar all day as the day goes by because I want to make sure that nothing is going to mess with this. Because the last time I checked the radar, uh, the storms and shit like that weren't supposed to be moving in until like 9, 10 o'clock at night. I was like, yeah, fuck it, we're golden. We're going to good. We're gonna do this. We're going <clears> to <throat> we're gonna go out and we're going to make this little kid's day. And uh, because that's a bright spot for for all of us, right? That, that's a that's a big bright spot for all of us is to be able to go out and do something. That's what we do in the hooligans, right? We we go out and we feed homeless people. We sit down and, and break bread with them, talk with them, get to know them. Uh, except for the the really weird ones that you know, uh, might get violent or aggressive. <clears throat> We do have to deal with that from time to time. We 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 take and get together and raise money for uh, for people who are, are sick or ill. Oh, here here comes the boss. Here she comes. Oh, I love this. This is great. i i we've missed you. I didn't even know you started. Well, do you not have your notifications on? No, I was working on it. Okay. Well, huh, that's a bummer. Here you go, guys. Really? Really, you're not, oh, see, you were supposed to bend over in front of the chair. We are going to give him the money shot. What? What the hell? Just sit down. You just, you took away the money shot. Good evening, John Underwood. Good to see you, buddy. Wilby has finally found it within her to join us. Do you want to pull that mic a little closer to you, sweetheart? Do you want to get it about a fist away from your face? I'm going to get a fist. <laughs> you want to get a fist? That could go, that could be bad ways. Man. I mean, I've never, I've never tried to fit a whole fist up there, but I, you I said, better not <laughs> fuck you up. <laughs> and now it's on, folks. The show, now the show has started. All right, so I, you did that on purpose. I sure did. You did that on purpose. So here, I thought we were going to be able to go out and put a smile on some little kid's face. And I checked the radar, and bam, 5.30, 30 minutes before kick stands up fucking looks like rain and shit moving in so now i'm bummed and i felt real selfish for canceling the event but i have let's say we kick stands up at 6 p.m it's over by 10 after 6 i still have an hour ride home in uh in inclement weather i really didn't okay i left in the morning geared up for for warmer drier weather i, I did not think to put any I didn't put a condom in, in the bike. You know what I'm saying? I didn't put a body condom in. There was, there was no rain gear, no nothing like that. So I canceled it. I felt really fucking horrible. 
No, you don't was... even have rain gear. Okay, yeah, you got a point. I got rain gear. I just never use it. I mean, I have some Harley Davidson stuff. Yeah, and that would fit on my toe. It's tiny. I'm not too proud to wear Harley Davidson. I don't give a fuck. I love Harleys. Some of them. I love some Vicks. I don't love I don't love all of every bike, but I love a bike from everybody. Hey Delilah. You, you know how that works. Eskimo Joe says he almost went. Dude, it I thought that would have been really awesome, actually, to go out and just get together and do something that would have made a little kid's day, right? That that's because that's what we that's what it's all about, really, to me. And that would have made my fucking day. I would have come home getting a big old smile. Hi. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> didn't work out didn't work out at all not. mr anonymous is uh watching us this evening cannot say his name <laughs> do not say his name <laughs> i'm gonna say it don't say his name just kidding you gotta respect that i love that guy and what i love about mr anonymous is he gives like crazy to every event that we do but when we thank people he always says don't say my fucking name don't say my name. He doesn't so. say fucking, just so you know. Uh, I've heard him say fucking at least mm, once. Nope, I have not. You, well, that's just because you haven't. Right? Maybe he's just too polite to say it in front of a lady. David Thompson says they just did a birthday drive-by for a little girl on his street today. See, that is the shit that... And if I, this is the stuff that makes me wish I lived closer to the city. It really does. If, if I live close... I even actually considered trying to find somebody to let me drop my bike in their garage for you know un until the weather breaks afterwards but then i was like wait a minute i'm gonna what am i gonna do call will be and go home without my baby speaking of which uh i was kind of considering selling the magnum stop no i was i was thinking about it don't be silly i put a few hundred miles on it it's time for a new one. Oh my god omg oh no <laughs> what? Stop. You know I, I have a problem with commitment, right? Oh, my gosh. I mean, other than to you, you, you're the only thing that, you and the kids, that's it. Look. What? That motorcycle needs to stick around for a minute. I, I haven't had a chance to really bond with it, Wobie. Yeah, so give it some damn time, for goodness sake. And, you know, here, I, I figured out what my problem is. Uh -huh. Here's, I, uh, you got a minute? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> you might need a couple for this one. How much you? How long you been drinking already? I just actually brought this drink out here. I knew I was gonna need it. All right. So here's here's what my problem is. The bike is flawless. That's my problem. When it comes to anything in my life, for some reason, I like it a little better if it's a little fucked up. It is a little fucked up. What's no? What's the matter with it? You don't really like the cross bones or the <laughs> the you, I don't know. You don't all really, the skull and crossbones yes. decorate. Yeah, but I promised the guy that we bought it from that I would leave them on there because he he really wants to have the opportunity to to buy it back unchanged. Okay. Well, he can't have it back. <laughs> you don't even like victories. Shut up, I like that bike, and I've only rode on it once, so stop now. I want to ride on it a few times. When all this crazy-ass shit breaks, I want to be able to get on the back of there and ride for a little bit. Well, see, there's that, that's Sam Wester says Ray's about to get fisted by Wolby. Don't threaten me with a fucking good time, pal. Oh, no. No? I'm not going to fist you. <laughs> I you think know we, what that means? Yeah. No, honey, why don't you tell me? What does that mean? I would love to hear your definition of this. Shut the hell up. No, I now you, you open the door. Let's I, hear it. I did not open the door. Let's just make that clear <laughs> right now. That door is not open. <laughs> so you're not gonna you're not gonna educate. We have a lot of prudential people in our audience that they might not know what this means. You need to educate. Sweetheart. I don't want to. That I don't need to give visuals. No one needs a visual. Christopher Worden, when I go back to work, I want a big bike other than my CR250L. You know what, buddy? Chris, there's, there are so many amazing bikes out there, honestly. And this is, this is part of my problem. And, and I, it's true. I, have, I loved my cross country. Why? Because it needed love. It was a little broken. 
was a little fucked up. And then eventually it became like a shitty girlfriend where it was just clingy and needy and constantly needed love. And I didn't have it to give. I know what. Maybe what? I should back it out the garage. And... No. Well, I'm, no. I'm trying to make sure, you know. No. It's... Last time you backed my bike out of the garage, it ended up in the fucking woods. And I came home and you were crying and you were like, I'm really sorry. I just wanted to wash it for you. Well, yeah, because you had that stupid thing on it that made it fucking take off on me. <laughs> okay, so when we first got the cross country, oh, uh, which is identical to the Magnum in every way. Some guys will try to tell you that the cross country has shorter bags, um, that they're, it, it is different. The only difference you're going to find, and I don't know how they justify the huge price jump from a cross country to a Magnum with this little bit of difference. They put a lowering link on the back end so you so that the ass end of the bike sits lower by about an inch and a half to two inches. They put a Bluetooth unit in the stereo so that your phone automatically connects. And... Fuck, is that... Oh, 200-watt stereo. Those are, you know, and, and a more comfortable seat. Uh, those are the only real differences you're going to get from a cross-country, which you can pick up for... Uh, 7500 bucks to a magnum which starts at around 12,000 uh used prices of course because they don't fucking make them anymore fuck you very much Polaris <clears throat> but uh the good side is is uh victory still exists they just slapped an Indian badge on it and they call it the challenger but I digress so um yeah that uh, as, as I was trying to say, Chris, there are so many fucking bikes out there, and, and this is part of one of my problems. Every fucking time I walk in, I walk into Fox Power Sports, see my buddy Ozzy Ilian and Craig Van Dyke and uh, Mr. Todd Arnold down there. I, actually, he's not much of a buddy. I, I, I don't think the guy likes me that much, but he puts up with me because I'm a client, and that's nice. I like him. I like everybody. I'm a fucking friendly guy. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, I walk in there and I can find, you know, I'm crazy about the Moto Guzzi MGX 21. I'm crazy, crazy about the Moto Guzzi Audace. I'm crazy for the Ducati Diavel X, or is it an S? Diavel, I don't know. The Diavel. It's badass, badass motherfucker. It's a crazy as fuck, badass bike. Triumph America, Triumph Thunderbird, Triumph Bonneville Bobber, Triumph Rocket 3, especially the new one with a 2.5 liter 2,500cc engine. I dude, I, I I just walk in there and it's it's all over the place. So I go fast. It, it well, everybody knows that thanks to you. Uh, so yeah, I was talking about that. Wow. What? <laughs> what? What? I wasn't talking about the other. I was talking about that situation. What was situ a little you clarity? You walk in there and you go. <laughs> <laughs> So, Chris, if you it depends on what you were looking to spend. Chris, I just want something I can cruise on and go on long rides. My bike, my ass is sore. Yeah, you, you definitely want to get a cruiser for something like that. Um, I've I've rode all kinds of them, right? Just in the last year, just in the last year, I've had a V Strom one thousand. Uh, I had a Concourse fourteen hundred. Uh, my Magnum, Cross Country. What else do we have out in this bitch? Well, is, it, is that it? I don't. I guess. I don't know. That's just in the last year. God only knows how many more will be out here. Mm, I love it when you talk dirty to me. Um, but a lot of guys, consider a Vulcan 650S. Amazing bike, right? For Especially for the price. You can pick up a, a, a nice gently used two-year-old Vulcan 650S, five grand, right? And uh, and, I, and I mean this, never buy a bike brand new if you can help it, unless you really, really can't fucking resist. Because every year, dozens of guys walk into these places, they sign their name on the financing, shit goes tits up for them, or they just decide riding is not for them. And they put 3,000 miles on the fucking bike and that's it. They turn around and sell it. Two years, two years old, three years old. I actually had a chance to get a Victory Octane last year. Anybody who knows anything about the Victory Octane, world record holder for the burnout, 2.3 miles. Amazing fucking piece of machinery. Absolutely incredible bike. Thing had 
uh, less than 2,000 miles on it. Hadn't even had its first oil change. Guy wanted, uh, I could have got it for 5,200 bucks. It was, uh, we had a bad situation. I couldn't seem to actually hook up with the guy. What do we try, honey, with that guy? Five, six, seven times. And every time we went to, wanted to go get it, it just, it wasn't there. Yeah. But, you know, on an Octane, you're going to end up in a similar situation to your bike. It is a bar, it's a bar hopper. It's, you know, it's just for riding short distance around town. It, it's not going to be incredibly comfortable. If you want to get a go bagger, it's hard to beat, uh, but here we go. Craig Van Dyke. Craig Van Dyke works at Fox Power Sports. He knows all this shit. Yamaha Raider. Best powerful cruiser I've ever owned. And with a Yamaha, you're pretty much buying reliability. You know, you just, it, they're fucking, they, they fucking run forever. Uh, if you start looking at the Suzuki's, like the M109R or the V-Strom or whatever, Stay away from anything pre, you know, like 2006, seven, eight. They had an issue with second gear, uh, and it was expensive and pain in the ass to fix. But Suzuki, other than that, is an amazing fucking bike, you know. And you might want to consider getting an ADV bike. You can ride an ADV bike all day comfortably. I was super comfortable on that V Strom 1000. Shit tons of power. I could not keep the front wheel of that thing on the ground. And <laughs> that bike was insane. Lots of storage, right? You can put your shit in it. You can put the wife on the back and go for a nice ride. Justin DeYoung says, I like the Yamaha Warriors. Lawrence Cooper, uh, member, of the, he, he, member of the Hooligans, he used to have a Yamaha Warrior. I was going to say, I did not see him in here. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't think he's watching tonight. Lawrence Cooper had a Yamaha Warrior. That thing was uh, 1800 and it was mean as shit. Cooper. Cooper. That was an awesome fucking bike until he was... Parked in stop and go traffic on 131 North, and some asshole texting decided to park on top of the bike and uh, with Lawrence underneath their car. He survived. Everything was fine. Came out of it with hardly a scratch. Ron Page says he likes his Triumph Tiger 800. Another amazing bike. Love the Triumph line. Love Triumphs, man. Last year I was trying to pick up a couple of uh, I got it was several of those Triumph. They were the 865 CC. God damn it! What Triumph is that? I mean, a whole bunch of them came with the 865, but it was like a 2013 Triumph. It wasn't in America. I don't know. The guy was letting it go for 1800 bucks, Low miles. Then there was another guy letting one go with 2100 Some bitch put a supercharger on it. <laughs> What's up, Ron Kelly? I really wanted to get my hands on that one. Good evening, Ron Kelly. Good to see you. Craig Van Dyke. Warrior became the Raider. Okay. Well, see, that's what I love about when Craig's watching. He's knowledgeable about all this shit, being that he works the dealer. So, yeah, I, I'm losing my shit. I'm all over the map here. I, I just want to ride. I want this bullshit over with. I, I, I don't give a f I don't fucking care about the coronavirus. I mean, I, I mean, when I say that, I'm not saying... I just don't care to talk about it anymore. I, I And the, the, the quarantine, the shutdown, lockdown, whatever you want to call it, is just making me a little Christopher Warden. I would love to find a cruiser for around twenty five hundred dollars. So you're going to want to look at one of the older Yamahas, probably. Uh, I I can't tell you how many older, like oh five oh six Yamaha V Stars. I see for two thousand to twenty five hundred bucks, and they're a great fucking bike. Run forever. Greg Thomas says, "Hey guys, loving what you do, Mister Thomas. I love what you do." Even if it's just plugging in and watching, man, for real, you should check out these nipples. Just for, just because you guys are watching, I love we this shit. We should pierce them. What? We should pierce them. You are nipples. not fucking piercing my nipples. Why not? Never gonna happen. I mean, we are bored. Yeah, but my nipples are already huge, right? They're already like salad plates, and then the actual little part that pops out, it's like a fucking baby finger. I'm just right? saying it'd be. You something. pierce it, and it's gonna get even weirder. I just say it'd be something to do over this quarantine. Uh, how about we? Pierce your little man in the canoe. <laughs> how about we don't? All righty then. That's about how I feel about you shoving we, a goddamn hot needle through my fucking nipple. We, we could pierce your little... <laughs> okay, okay. First off, <clears throat> let me just start by saying, even if it's true, <laughs> never refer to it that's like saying it's to a guy not true. that's like saying that's to why a, it's funny okay yeah that's like saying to a guy oh my god it's so cute don't ever call a penis cute that is just okay. goddamn 
but emasculating. But it's not true. So it's that was is what makes it funny. <laughs> I mean, I'd have to go find a bull ring to stick in it. So mm. you asshole! I almost spit on the fucking computer. <laughs> Jesus. Craig Van Dyke, it's hard to pick just one bike. So many different bikes for so many different purposes, so many different times, types of riding. Everyone should have at least three. Fucking A, I love that guy. And I couldn't agree more. If I had my way, I here's the start of the collection, right? And I'm, I'm going to have to go brand by brand. Uh, I would. I have my Magnum. I would like a, another Victory Jackpot. I would like another Victory Octane. I would like a Victory Hardball and absolutely a Victory Boardwalk. Okay, that does it for the victories. Triumph, I want a Tiger. Uh, I would also like to have a Bonneville Bobber. Uh, the new one, the 2020 with the Union Jack painted on the side. Uh, 2020 uh, Bonneville Bobber, awesome fucking bike. Uh, I would also like to get a big old Triumph America or Thunderbird. We need a much bigger garage for uh, I'm everything just getting that started, sweetie. Like get. get me over to the uh, Moto Guzzi's, right? And then uh, pretty much you got to get a California 1400. Uh, especially the touring edition one where you got the, the bags on the back and uh, the ugliest fucking trunk you ever saw. But they, they have it. It's out there and it's super fucking expensive. Uh, and then you get the El Dorado. The El Dorado, the Moto Guzzi El Dorado is just awesome. I love that bike too. Uh, and then an Audace, Moto Guzzi Audace, and you got to get an MGX 21. You have to. And Uh-oh. then we move on to Ducati, fucking DFL all the way. I can't even, I, I just love it. Can we just steer away from the Moto Guzzi? What did you just say? Can we just steer away from the Moto Guzzi? I don't like the Moto Guzzi. What? I don't like the Moto Guzzi. Okay, anyways, we'll put a pin in that one, uh, and we'll come back to that. What's next? We had uh, Guzzi's, we had Vix, we had uh, Triumphs. Uh, Yamaha. Uh, absolutely would love to get uh, my hands on the new, the the what is that, the fucking, god damn it. Now I got to Google the shit. Great big old touring bagger. Craig, help me out here, buddy. Uh, you guys had two or three of them on the floor out there. The uh, fucking... Yeah, I know. I'm Googling it. And they're typing cock, penis, and wang in there. Uh, oh, we're going to get on Kawasaki's here in just a minute, buddy. Yamaha touring bike. And it can't be one of the old ones. If it pulls a bunch of pictures of the fucking old ones, I'm going to fucking... What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> Are you snoring back there? <laughs> yes. You're making me snore. I'm, I'm making you snore. Ooh, ooh. I, 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 the FJR 1300. That, that's a sweet fucking... Uh, here it is. This guy right here. The Yamaha Star Venture. Uh, that's the one with the trunk, though. Uh, what's this other one here? It doesn't have a trunk. What is it? What is so boring to you about this? The Eluder. The Yamaha Eluder. Uh, go to the Hondas. Yeah, you got the fucking Goldwing, One-Eyed Friend. What the fuck, Delilah? Uh, <laughs> I love you, Delilah. The Eluder is the, the Yamaha that I was thinking about. One-Eyed Trouser Trout. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Suzuki. Uh, <laughs> Finally, some funny conversation. Right. It, it, well, I've said it a million times that they make the show a whole lot better dong than I do. Uh, and it's because the shit that they type in, um, the, the comments that they throw up are mm-hmm. honestly, this show, I think it's more entertaining for me to see what you guys say than for you guys to tune in to see what the fuck I say. Uh, Kawasaki Vulcan 650 S yes, man for a small bike. Absolutely great bike. Uh, and then you got the, the Vicaro, their big old bagger. Freddie Peterson bought a brand new one last year, had some problems with a lot of oil leakage, but it was all taken care of under warranty. I believe he's got that shit all straightened out right now. Trouser snake. <laughs> Sam Wester, this show is going to the penis. ding a My ding a All right. Uh, Black and Decker Pecker record. That is absolutely Pocket not. Pocket rocket. The pocket rockets. Now we're talking about vibrators and fucking <laughs> Dave Edwards is talking about blowjobs from girls with um, braces. Imagine that coming from Dave Edwards. Just imagine that. Yeah, I don't know. Sam Wester, vagina, vagina, vagina. <laughs> All right, you guys are going to throw up a bunch of names for, uh, let's see, Craig Van Dyke. My dad just bought a Vulcan S. It's awesome. See, there you go. And it's actually one of the top 20 fastest cruisers you can get with a 650cc engine. That thing is wicked quick. Okay. Go to the Harleys. 
My favorite Harley, it's an oldie, but a goodie. I'm crazy about the Rocker C. It's rare. Not a lot of people actually liked it, but I was, I, I really thought that was a badass looking bike. Loved the Harley Rocker C. When it comes to Harleys, I'm, I'm a whole lot more picky, more of a connoisseur. There are certain ones that are just, I, I think that they're fucking Peter amazing. Eater. What? Dave Edwards. Oh. You know what? Fuck it. You know, I, I can tell you why Dave, Dave Edwards is bored. So we're just going to fucking call him. Delilah says pussy pounder. Oh, my God. <laughs> this show is so definitely going to get thrown off of YouTube. I don't really give a shit, though. Actually, they haven't thrown us off yet, but I can promise you they're never going to pay us. Well. Dave. Dave's not here, man. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, David? Oh, just kind of hanging out, having fun in the chat. What's yeah. up with you guys? Ah, uh, dude. Okay, so what events haven't been canceled yet? Why don't we try that? Um, that'd be a really good question. So far, everything through the end of May is canceled. <laughs> um. June 15th is earliest I've seen any events going on recently. Um, the, the event for all, all the vets down in Ohio, that was canceled recently, I think today. I know that Aiden's, know ride, open. Aiden's ride down in northern Indiana was uh, pushed back to August. Harley's opener, this uh, was that this week? Harley's opener? Season opener? Yeah. That was fucking canceled. Everything's canceled. Fuck, 2020 is canceled. Fuck it, I want my money back in a redo. Hooligans Holiday is yeah, not canceled. I, I tell you what, I've been reading about a lot of greedy bastards, though, that, you know, people and that, like nurses and shit that are paying subscriptions for different things and the places are closed and they're still collecting this, the money, from, you know, like gyms in different places. How do they get away with that crap? I actually have no idea. Our gym memberships just came out of my account uh, the other day. Did they really? Because yes. they said they wouldn't be taking it out. They lied. Oh, what a piece of shit. Yeah, they, they made this big thing and said that um, Planet Fitness would not be taking your $20 out a month. They would keep your thing going, but until you were able to come back into the gym, they wouldn't take your $20 out. Fuck them. We got a nice home gym anyway. Yeah, I know, but I'm about to call them. All right. Do it. Fuck it. I ain't got nothing better to do. I might as well call them bitch them out. But to do this to nurses and, and medical workers, I mean, that's just not fucking cool. I even read about a cruise ship where, like, a whole bunch of nurses and doctors get together on a cruise ship. And they had to spend, like, a couple grand, okay, for this event. Yeah. And they, the, the people canceled the event, and they said they're going to keep they're keeping their money. They're not going to refund their money. Oh well, cruise lines don't give a fuck. They'll take they, they they're not giving your money back anyway. Mm -mm. They they that's and honestly, I mean, if you look at Norwegian's uh, stock, they can't really afford to give back shit. Their stock went from sixty four bucks a share, and within a week's time, it dropped down to seven dollars and eighty cents a share. I know because I was actually going to buy like a thousand shares while it's low, but. At this point, I'm, I'm wondering if they're not just going to go belly up. I think they'll turn into a penny stock first. <sighs> I'm, well, I'm really glad that they're not getting a bailout. He, you know, where I, and, and politics all aside, this is not about politics. This is about right and wrong. I'm a business owner, right? And I'm not going to get shit for help because I'm not a big business. And that's fine. Um, our family's company has weathered every recession and every problem since 1957. I know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm going to be fine. But as far as like all these other big companies taking a bailout, fuck them. And here's why. I hope they go under because that enables opportunities for other people to grow in a new, a whole new class of businesses to get started. And it, I mean, it's hard at this point for people to, I, I've got lucky. I mean, I've been doing what I do for a long, long time. But I would love to see everyday normal people get out and start businesses doing the shit that they love and getting paid to do it. Because to me, there's no more rewarding thing you can do in life. That's just it's me. It's funny you say that. Because there's, there's, I mean, there's a big movement right now to try to help keep local businesses running. Local you know, businesses? The big box and, 
I am all for keeping local businesses in. They belong in. But when we bailed out the banks, right, in 2008, it was, was $3.2 trillion. They were supposed to give that money. They were supposed to use that money to pay people's mortgages. They used 3.8% of the money to pay people's mortgages and then gave themselves bonuses with the rest. So they can fuck right off. They don't. And now they just got two and a half trillion of the latest bailout that they were supposed to give out to businesses like mine, right? And, and there are other small business owners, Connie, Connie Van Leinen or O'Hearn, she owns a small business. There's that money was supposed to go to people like us and they're not dispersing the money again. No, they're not. And, and the, look, some of the, not all the automakers, but some of the automakers were that way with their bailout money. They were all supposed to pay it back, but I don't remember exactly, but I think there was one or two that didn't pay it back, and then there was a couple that did pay everything back. Yeah, and uh, honestly, fuck them. I, I really don't care if they go under. I, I just don't. And maybe that makes me sound like a prick, but uh, big businesses can eat my ass. I'm, I prefer small-town businesses, mom-and-pop shops all day long. Fuck Walmart. Uh, I, I love Meyer because Meyer started as a small business. They, you know, and, and as far as I know, they're actually good to their employees. Wow, this show just really jumped off from motorcycles. Hey, Dave, what's your favorite motorcycle? Meyer's has been real good to their employees. One of the things I think should, should they shouldn't allow is bailing out a publicly traded company. Absolutely. To me, a, a publicly traded company is in it strictly for the money. Yeah, and if the shareholder stocks go belly up, then fuck them too. They made a bad gamble. Wow, we really got Well, the shareholders can afford to lose some. You know what I mean? That's where the law should be is the shareholders shouldn't be getting their profit checks while everybody else is suffering. Yeah, I... I and they shouldn't be getting bailed out so that the profit holders can still get their... The shareholders can still get oh. their profits. That's not what the money's meant for. I would have been much happier if every single penny of this current uh, bailout, three three and a half trillion, went directly to you guys. Every single working person in the United States, not the companies, fuck the companies, but to the people. And here's why. Uh, when you guys get more money, you're going to spend it. You're going to get a new roof on your house, new windows. New you're going to you're going to fix fence. your cars, new fences. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll, I might be a little bit selfish in my motivation. Thanks for throwing me under the bus, Wooby. Uh, but yeah, you're going to spend that money. You want to see an economy explode? Fuck trickle down economics. Give that money to the people because they are going to spend every bit of it on Main Street in their in their small towns. In, in the towns that they live in with builders and, and local car dealers and auto repair shops, they're going to get all the shit done that they can't afford to do, and you will see an economy fucking explode in a way you've never seen. And not since, uh, you know, what, the late 40s. It's the last time we had trickle-up economics, and it was amazing. It gave us the longest period of economic growth in the history of the world. So uh, enough of that bullshit. We need to ride. Yeah, it's been tough. I, I, I'm fortunate where I can work from home or I can ride or ride or drive into work. So, if something happens, I, I, I can hop, and if the weather's nice enough, I can hop on my bike and ride it into work, do what I need to do, and ride home. And I'm not on any major roads, you know, per se. And I'm live out in the country, so it might be a little safer for me. Although I did see some SLB at a big intersection where it's 55 both ways and it's a four-way stop below the stop sign yesterday. And if I wouldn't have been making a right-hand turn, he probably would have took me out. <clears throat> have you uh, have you gotten any dirty looks from people? I know when I was out riding yesterday. Now, I thought that it would be awesome to ride right now because the roads would be so much more empty. I was wrong. Motherfuckers are out there qualifying. Yeah, I, I mean, I have gotten a few people looking at me strange. I actually seen a couple of news articles. One was California, and I think the other one was Chicago, where these people are pulling, dressing up like cops and pulling people over. Uh, that'd be a for, mistake um, in violating Michigan. Violating the stay at home orders. Yeah, that would be a mistake in Michigan. I would think in Chicago, too. There's a lot of goddamn guns in Chicago. But uh, you pull over a, a Michigan biker. And almost every damn one of them are packing or carrying that, and then and you're just pretending to be a cop. You're gonna get your ass shot. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily a biker. It was just pulling over somebody and warning them about being up for therapy. But yeah, 
people are losing their minds over all this. I mean, I'll be honest with you. At first, I was a little upset about not being able to ride. Until I thought about the aspect, and you really, and will be really brought it home for me, is I can ride all day, ride six days straight, not have an issue that seventh day I ride, I have somebody blow a stop sign and they take me out and I got to go to urgent care. Well, what happens when there's no place for me to go to? This may be the best cigarette I ever have, guys. Do they take... Do they take six doctors two hours to try to patch me together, or do they write me off and move on? Hi. Hey, uh, Dave told me to light a cigarette. and uh, He did? Yes, yes. He told me he misses when I smoke on the show. I didn't know you were coming right back. Mm. This is going out. <laughs> Dave's not here. Uh, yeah, dude. It, it, and I didn't think of this either. Jen made me think about it. And it's because she talked to Renee Ritzma, who, who uh, you know, she works. She's she's not front lines because she is a, currently has a, a, mute, a compromised immune system. But uh, she, she does normally would be on the front lines of this kind of stuff. Drink up, guys. Anybody drinking? Yeah. There you go. I am. I'm drinking Screwball. What am I drinking, Wilby? Is this Knob Creek or Eagle Rare? Eagle Rare. Oh, shit. Eagle Rare twists me up. But Renee was talking to Jen about it, and she said that's exactly where the problem lies. People are mad about this this whole stay-at-home order being extended, and I get their anger. I really do. I get their frustration. But if you watch the numbers, and I do every day, I watch world meters like crazy. It's a website, world meters Just Google it. And and actually, Michigan's number of new cases is declining. Okay, so the faster we get those numbers down, and it's not about whether or not it's going to kill you. I mean, yes, to a degree, it is about that. But more than anything, it's about overwhelming our healthcare system. Currently, Michigan has 2,800 ventilators. 1,400 plus of them are already being used. If those numbers go up all at once, You've got a fucking mess. Now you've got people who their wife is trying to have a baby and walks into the hospital and she can't get care or the hospital's already overrun with sick fucking people with, with the Rona, right? So there's so and much more at play. normal pregnancy, let's not talk about a breach or a C-section. Right. I totally get it. So, uh, you know, Jen made me realize this. It. So I did ride for work. Uh, I, I do feel a little guilty about it. But uh, at the same time, the bike is parked now. The weather has turned on us. Mother Nature's a whore and uh, has turned her back on us. We're going to be in much below average temps for the next 10 to 14 days at least. Eh, fuck it. Well, ABJ you know. says she's sailing with the captain. Sean Etson is drinking Jim Beam Black tonight. Alex Quick, Orange Vanilla, Captain Morgan. God, look at these guys. They're all drinking with us. Lily, Red Stag, of course. I love my sister. (laughs) Justin DeYoung's got his Oberons. I've had that before. That's not a horrible beer. And I don't do beer, but I can do that. Christopher Warden says, I'm sober. Hey, buddy, proud of you. Proud of you for that. That's always a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Unless you really got to have a few to get through the night with that last chick at the bar. Or worst case... Uh, maybe you're the last option at the bar and she's got a drink. I don't know. I don't know. I, I've, I'm just saying. I've been both. I've, I, you know, I, I've seen that go both ways. I've, I've been the last guy at the bar. Uh, Ron Page drinking a white Russian. Oh, snap. That is my favorite. <laughs> you just kind of hurt I'll me. I tell you what, I'm hooked on this screwball whiskey. It tastes like peanut butter. It's actually really freaking good. Oh, Dude, I, I love peanut, peanut butter. butter. I love peanut butter. Ugh. You got to try it, Ray. It's a sipping whiskey. It's Pineapple good. and Malibu. Well, I'll tell you what, Dave. When we get together, hopefully you come out to Hooligan's Holiday Bash this summer because that is not getting canceled. We don't know when it's going to be scheduled, but it's not getting canceled. I'll fucking tell you that right now. Uh, bring a bottle, and I will bring a bottle of uh, Eagle Rare, and uh, we'll have to have a few sips. Anybody that comes out to Hooligan's Holiday... I want I want to have a, you know do a have a drink with you. 
Uh, but we're all gonna have to do it at once because I'm I'm really not a huge drinker. Uh, a couple of drinks and I'm <laughs> I'm fucking. You don't want to Crawling. see me. No, no, you don't want. No, dude, I get insane. I get off the rails crazy. Never violent. Ever, never, ever, ever. Funny. Funny as shit. The last time that you were really drunk, that um, our friend was over here from Rockford, a strange guy I haven't seen in forever. Charles Ritchie was watching. I know. Um, you were talking to him on the toilet, drunk as shit. <laughs> he was standing in the doorway. Wait, let us clarify. I was vomiting. I wasn't in there dropping a deuce. You were sitting on the toilet. Uh, was I throwing up in the bathtub? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think you were scared. <laughs> and um, he was just talking to you. You guys carried on a conversation for like a half hour, and you don't even remember it. I have <laughs> no memory. That's the night of he this. shaved you, or we shaved you, I should say. Yeah, you guys shaved my whole body, and then we set Charlie on fire. Literally, that that's that's the shit that happens when I drink too much you'll never see me get violent ever but you will see me do absolutely crazy shit oh, white russian that just really kind of i want to write russian now throw a rowboat down a dirt driveway crazy okay yes i've done that yes uh and cartwheel uh being my oldest son remembers this we had a uh memorial day party one summer and a bunch of friends and Was i he drinking He's probably Dakota. Dakota's always drinking. Oh, I if know, he's, he's breathing, he's I drinking. I know he's always drinking nowadays, but I'm talking about was he drinking back then when you did that? No, he was a little kid back then, honey. Well, that he doesn't couldn't have been. Mean anything. He was like 10 years old. Well, I didn't know if you gave him booze or not. I absolutely did not give my son booze until he was 11 in two days. But um, that's what I thought. I'm just kidding. I didn't give him <laughs> booze back then either. Dakota, Cartwheel, you can chime in here and save my ass. But yeah, we got shit faced. Me and a bunch of friends, and then we decided to roll a rowboat down the driveway, and we made it a good three and a half, four feet. Uh, it's harder than it looks. Uh, that's all I can say about that. Hey, did you catch Jennifer just posted? Here's a positive. As of now, Nuremberg is still on. That is that is a beautiful thing. The Nuremberg uh, event is one of my favorite events every fucking year. All the money raised goes to a... Uh, a family or a victim fighting cancer it's an amazing cause and it's a great fucking time and you come out and hang out with us and you're going to meet some really wonderful people don't worry about me don't don't pay attention to me you'll meet guys guys like dave edwards and uh, john underwood and rob nuremberg and abj who's not a guy she's a lady uh and preacher preacher will party until you puke i promise <laughs> preacher preacher is crazy abj He's... will party till you puke too uh Oh, D Pickard, D Pickard, if she shows up, yeah, you can bet it's going to get nuts. Just don't give her a go-kart. Oh, God, keep the keys, keys all the way to <laughs> everything that you own. Again. You want to see her drag race again? No, keep the keys the put away. Race. Remember when she got in the back of that tire with the helmet on? D was awesome on the tire drag. She was awesome on the tire drag race. She's a lot of fun. She is fun. D Pickard. But she can't have keys to nothing because like, she will get hurt. Get on that tire, she's gonna get knocked around, but she did pretty good. Now wait a minute. The only person I've ever seen get hurt at one of these things is Jen, and that's because she got shit canned and loaded five girls on my quad runner. I wasn't driving though. <laughs> was them drunk girls driving. Who was it? Missy? Fucking Missy. Missy. <laughs> and then she did an endo. Missy felt so bad, and I went to work the next day, and my coworkers thought that you beat me because I had a, a big cut or a big bruise and knot on the top of my head, and I had cuts on the side of my face. I looked like I got beat up. They were they did they thought my husband was beating me. And D is an absolute blast to hang she out with. Fun. Sober, drunk doesn't matter. She's sweet. She's kind. She's always a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, yeah, she will get up to some shenanigans. So, oh, she did that day. Well, we all do. That's kind of the whole point. But uh, so, yes, not everything is canceled, but for the moment, everything is absolutely postponed. postponed. And that's, and yeah. Hey, Ray, there is one thing I wanted to point out that you brought up at the beginning of the show. You said you sent that audio to somebody and they sent, offered dick pics to you, right? Mm hmm. I sent you a boob video and you sent me. An audio about a little pecker, so I think I'm kind of on that same end, but I'm out the direction. <laughs> well, in my defense, 
It was funny as fuck. Craig Van Dyke yeah, says, well, I've no, never... Wait, like, what the hell is that? She heard me listen to it a couple times because I was laughing so much. Craig Van Dyke says, I've never seen D sober. <laughs> yeah, well, Craig's only been to one or two events, and D has been at dozens. And I've only seen her drink maybe two or three times that I can recall. What? For real. Are you fucking kidding me right now? No, not at all. I, I really only recall oh her. Oh, my God. You are crazy. She's been... <laughs> But maybe it's maybe I was drinking. I don't know. I don't recall drinking at too many events though. He's been drunk at almost every one of them. I don't think so. But she's so tiny though. Even uh, D D Pickard is such a tiny person. I really think two three drinks and she's she's probably set for the day. No, she's got a tolerance, honey. Does she? D, do you have a tolerance? Hell yeah, she does. Good evening, Billy Gillespie. Thanks for joining us, buddy. All I know is if you guys come on out to some of the events, this is what we do every week when things are normal. And this is killing me to have to do the show this way because usually by this time in the year, oh yeah, sorry, uh, by this time in the year, normally we can give you guys uh, video from events and and, and other hooligans because watching me every week is sucks. I'm sure I don't need to tell the four people that watch this on YouTube. But, uh, you know, it, it's so much more fun when we take the cameras out and we get with the hooligans that a lot of the guys that you're seeing are hearing comment here right now. They are so much fun. So I, it kind of sucks. It's killing the show. That's for sure. I was so excited to bust a camera out the other night for this little kid's birthday drive by. Uh, just because the people that I've met in this group are so much fucking fun. Um, but that sucks. It, it, you know, it, it will get better. Uh, the events will start up and the show will get a whole lot more interesting as it has been last summer and the summer before. Um, I don't even know what, where else to go with it. You know, that really, wait a minute, Dave Edwards, D Pickard, Wanger Hanger. Wait, are you guys still talking about names for dicks here? <laughs> nah, we'd never do that. I got in trouble for doing that at Thanksgiving dinner one year. Oh, wiener water, wiener water, wiener water. Lori King <laughs> says she's missing seeing everyone. I'm missing seeing everyone, too. You know, uh, like I said, usually by this time in the year, we're already, I mean, Jesus, we're only a couple weeks from what is normally Baldwin Blessing. We were going to have 150 bikes ride up to Baldwin Blessing with us this year. That was going to be, uh, it breaks my heart that that shit's canceled. It's always next year. And, well, I, here's the way I look at it. When this thing is finally lifted, you are going to see impromptu motorcycle events. You're going to see people on the hooligans page throwing something up. Hey, it's Sunday morning. Dave Edwards, probably one of them, doing his Sunday fun day rides. If, you've never, if you're serious about riding, if you really want to put on two, 300 miles in a day, watch Dave Edwards and All About the Ride. These fuckers will drag we you. Do do a little riding. My ass, a little. These fuckers will drag you all over the state. You'll have a great time doing it. They're wonderful people. Justin DeYoung says, "Shit, I haven't had a chance to meet anyone yet. Get your ass to an event or two once they finally get started." Justin, everybody's family. You see this fucking hooligan hoodie on somebody? Kick their ass because they stole my fucking hoodie. But if you see another hooligan hoodie <laughs> on somebody then you know that they're probably fucking cool because we already weeded out a few of the douchebags. So, a few. A few. Um, and they they will not be named. We will be kind. <laughs> D. Pickard says stubby chubby. It, 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 every now and again here in the middle of the show, I'm just going to throw out the, a random name for a dick. Um, so, yeah, you guys definitely want to follow All About the Ride. Another great show to get in touch with or watch or listen to is the Bikers Babe, Bikes, Babes, and Booze podcast on CRB Radio, hosted by Hooligan Jim Schultz, another great guy. They're out of Detroit. I really wanted to get him on the show tonight, but I have not yet heard Ooh, back I'm from him because I'm not as important as Jim, and that sucks a little, yeah. but that's okay. Uh, we're trying to get... Uh, we're kind of get we're trying to get the guys from Bikes, Babes, and Boobs on the show. We also have uh, Shade Tree Surgeon out of Florida. He is not a hooligan, but he promised to come on the show. Hopefully this Sunday, because I think that would be a lot of fun. Josh okay. Laurent, yeah, yeah, he's a lot of fun. The guy's fucking great, super fun guy. Um, 
and then of course uh jay howard we've got dave dave edwards there is such an amazing cult of personality in the hooligans page um so if you're watching this on youtube and you want to get in on the fun first off click like and subscribe to the videos or you suck okay you straight up suck and then head on over to facebook and join the hooligans motorcycle enthusiast page where you'll you'll actually get to have some of the fun with everybody um I think my favorite part about the part that makes me laugh most about Jay Howard is every time he comes over, gives zero fucks. That dude will pull out a joint and spark it right up. He, he doesn't care if there's a three year old in the room. He's like, "Hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm motherfucker, I got glaucoma." <laughs> he he's fun though. I don't partake with him, but he's fun. Dave, did I talk over you too long? Did you did you have a fucking heart attack waiting for me to to talk? No, I'm still you... here. I'm just letting you go. I I've been around him. He um, Undertaker that is. He he does not give a he does not give one fuck. He just here, dude. Take a hit. It's good shit. Yeah, he is what he is, and that's what I love about Jay Howard. He has no fucking shame about who he is, and he knows he's a good person too. So uh, that's one of the things I love about Jay Howard. We have some of the most amazing well, he, fucking personalities. He's the shirt off his back to help somebody else that they really need it. You know, yes. He helps just about anybody else. Where are you going? I'm not done. You're about done? Yeah. You leaving me? Wobby's leaving, guys. Huh? Wobby, make sure to blow everybody a kiss. Hey, you totally. You can look at the camera, babe. There you go. <laughs> All right. We're going to end up the show here in just a few minutes, babe. You just want to smoke anyway. That's not true. I... I <laughs> What? I'm going to (laughs) say. Okay. Everybody, thank you. single fuck given. No, no. And I love her for that. God, that is just so fucking rude. Yeah, and it stinks too. (laughs) So, yes, we we do. I'm glad there's not smell of vision tonight. You guys, you guys, for those of you watching on YouTube, if you are anywhere in the West Michigan area, you want to definitely come out to a hooligan event this summer, whether it's Hooligans Holiday Bash or we make sure people know all about the Nuremberg event. We've got the the midnight run. Dave Edwards at All About the Ride has all the Sunday fun day rides, and they have a whole bunch of events too. And we try to make sure that everybody knows what's going on. You want to get out and meet some of these people because if you don't, you're really missing out on some fucking awesome people. And she left the room. Where's that cigarette? Uh, she's going to come back. And most Just... of the rides we do are not bar hopping rides either. I mean, they're destination rides. We'll usually a lunch and or, or breakfast and or lunch involved. And, you know, I've noticed that with you. I think the last time, well, Jen and I rode with you like two weeks after she got her, her endorsement, right? Yeah. And she shit her pants, not literally, folks, uh, but she, she did have a little bit of a freak out. Keep in mind, she was just started riding on I-94 coming out of fucking Chicago, right? The traffic was insane. Jen and I jumped off, let everybody else go ahead because we, we had gone from Grand Rapids down to uh, Michigan City, Indiana, and, and the traffic down there was just too much for her. So she and I took six hours. To, to take back roads all the way back home. We had a, we still had a great fucking day. It was awesome. I loved riding with you guys. Back roads are more fun than highways unless you got to get to a destination real quick. Anyway. D's busting my balls. He's just trying to sneak a smoky treat. You fucking narc. Well. <laughs> you guys know how it's been six months since I've gotten a smoke on the show. You guys remember the fucking, the, the room used to be just loaded with smoke. Uh, so, yeah, on that note, I I cannot wait to see you guys again on Sunday night. What is our, What are we at, Dave? Do you know how long we've been going here? I actually have, um, holy shit, we're over an hour. Minutes. We're over an hour. Yeah, about an hour and five minutes. Hour and five minutes right now. This show has been a lot of fun. It's so much more fun when we actually get to talk with all of you guys. ABJ, what's she got? Hopefully we will have the first year's party. Our beneficiary is doing great on chemo right now. This is in Okay, so this is in reference to the Missy Nuremberg Memorial event. <clears throat> you guys want to get out for that here, that smoker's cough. I got the, I got the fucking Rona. Uh, you guys definitely want to get out for that. It's going to last all weekend. There's an awesome ride. Dave, you'll be there, right? You guys always go. 
Yeah, I'll be there Saturday um, for for the weekend. I'm going to try to shoot um, GoPro video again of the ride like they did last year. Me, I posted some videos different places for it. Me too. I've got two cameras hooked up on the Magnum, and I'm hoping to get some great footage. And I, I actually want to get footage of you guys whenever we stop talking because for all the people out there that watch this shit, you guys think the show is about me, and it's not. It really isn't. The show is about talking about these wonderful people, these 1,430 members that ride with us and, and talking. You just got to meet them. That's all I can say. If you, I wish I could go back and post the old videos where we were out riding every summer and all the events. The shit that comes out of their mouth, man, let's just say hell is going to be crowded, okay? It was all in good, clean fun. Yes, it's always great. We always have such a fucking great time. Jen caught me smoking. Jen caught me smoking. I just saw her comment. Smoking is bad. So is premarital sex, but we sure did the fuck out of that, didn't we, sweetie? <laughs> mm. I'm going to get smacked for that one later. Oh, Jennifer just commented about my video. Thank you, Jennifer. So, yeah, you, you want to hit the all about the ride page. We Ride Michigan's not so much fun for me, man. I, it, when a page gets that big, it's kind of a pain in the butt. There's so many people that get butt hurt so easy. Well, it, it, it's, it, just, it's it's like church, kind of. There's, what, 25,000 members? It's like going to Res Life. Yep. And I tell you what, it's, it's not that fun to admit at times because everybody's has your own opinions and everybody gets hurt when you try to moderate it in any way you know there's a set of rules that were put down by the people that started the page and we have to try to interpret them and enforce them and at times it's not that much fun no no uh, sometimes uh, as we're lucky on the hooligans page uh most of the people we used to have a couple of guys that would get on there and uh, every time somebody was like, hey, I want to get my first bike that's not an ADV bike or not a dirt bike, what should I get? And every they'd always be like, you know, if the guy was looking at a Kawasaki or a Yamaha or a BMW or any other kind of bike, oh, it's a fucking piece of shit. You need to buy a real bike. Buy a Harley. You know, and they would yeah. be absolutely brutal to any. Now, okay, not everybody's going to be able to go drop twenty two to thirty two thousand dollars on a fucking Harley. And there are some Harleys out there. I, I like to sign the loan on it, yeah. I I'm a big fan of like the Street seven fifty. And that's an that's an inexpensive bike. I think that's a super cool fucking bike. This the the orange Harley that I had Ray when I met you was the first Harley I've ever owned. The one I have now is the second Harley. I've always ridden Hondas and Kawasaki. Pretty much my whole life. It's really the hard to go wrong I with a cow. That orange hot, the last three bikes I had before that orange um, Ultra were all Kawasaki. I had the Vulcan Voy Nomad Voyager, had um, a Vulcan Nomad, and I had um, a Cow 900. The old Cow 900 from 1981, though. It was yeah. a cafe-style bike. It, it is. It's hard to go wrong with any Kawasaki. First bike I ever rode on was a 1978 Kawasaki KZ1000. Those things were a demon. They made them just so they could race them. Yes. It was insane. Now imagine my 11-year-old ass getting on a Kawasaki KZ1000 to ride down to the store in the middle of the night to get my stepfather a six-pack of beer and a pack of Marlboros. How quick could you do it in? Uh, it was fucking stupid. It was that, the bike, that, <laughs> that bike was... Because you know what you're doing is trying to beat your best time every time. No, dude. At 11 years old, I was trying to not shit my pants on the bike. All right. Uh, that, was, that thing was absolutely insane. Couldn't believe he would just toss me the keys. Argh. Raymond is... is you know, I'm 11, right? I'm a little kid, right? This is my stepfather out of Chicago. Big fucking tough guy. Uh, rough and tumble. He's Raymond, my gay friend. That's what he always called me. Still does to this fucking day. I'm in my 40s, motherfucker. Raymond, my gay friend. 
Go on, take your ass down, and here's a note. Get me a pack of reds and a fucking six-pack of Schlitz. Ugh. God. Yep, and that was at 2 in the morning on a fucking school night. That was my childhood. Good times. Gene Gerwitz, 20 years on Norton's. Finally got talked into a sports or Norton's are a fucking cool bike. Delilah says, I like the naked bikes, but then again, I probably wouldn't be able to hold up a full dress. I actually, and here's the truth. I know I ride dressers, but the naked bikes are by far, to me, way sexier bikes. They are just way better looking. My favorite bikes are usually the naked bikes. The the, the Audace by Guzzi, the Jackpot by uh, Victory, or the Hardball by Victory. Yeah. Um, you know, the, I love the sportsters fucking love them. The rocker season naked bike by Harley. Um, huge fan of the naked bikes. I think they actually look better, but I don't mind a naked bike, but I got to have a windshield. Oh, that's one thing I discovered this week. The, the windshield on a victory Magnum at a whopping four inches can lick my sack. It really helps with fatigue. I ended. I got. I, I'm pretty sure I got at least twenty, twenty five. Either, either they were rocks or fast incoming bugs, fast as shit yesterday, just bouncing off my face like crazy. But the naked bikes are absolutely my favorite. I, I just. I, I love the way they look so much better. But being that we live in West Michigan, I love being able to pop my lowers on, and uh, a, a tall windshield on my. My, my victory magnum and stay warm I man i can ride that thing in 40 degrees at 70 miles an hour down the highway and feel nothing whereas when i used to ride my victory jackpot it freeze your fucking balls off man yeah it was a nice thing about the kawasaki voyager um the whole front end just like one big fairing so if you close the the vents down below i mean even when it's raining i didn't need to wear rain gear my legs never got wet i only had to wear a rain jacket yeah and that's and what the windshield on those things are like 23 inches tall that's what actually made me get into uh the the full dressers or the the fairing bikes in the first place was tony and i tony whaley crazy fucking tony whaley i love that guy we went for a ride up into central michigan one day just dicking around and we got caught in the rain like crazy coming back. We're riding back, and I'm stopping off all the time because I'm soaking wet from head to toe. And here's Tony. On he, I think he's got a, a Ultra, beautiful Harley Ultra, uh, full hard lowers, full fairing. He's, we're driving down the, down the road in pouring rain. Dude is dry as can be, got a cigarette hanging out of his fucking mouth. <laughs> His pant legs were dry and everything. I was like, oh, I got to get me one of those. It's, I, I go with a full dresser for the comfort for long rides. Yeah, that was one thing. I'd like to get, the, the jackpot was like riding on a rock. I'd like to get what you call a bar bike. I call it a, a city bike just for like riding to and from work. It'd make it a lot easier. Oh, yeah. If I could get... A, a a bar hopper or a, you know just a little commuter jesus christ don't even get me started right you got your triumph bonneville bobbers you got your victory octane you got your indian scout you got uh the the vulcan 650s uh what the, the yamaha's got a kick-ass one too they, see i'm looking at just like getting an old goldwing that's been cafeed out and riding one of those around i'd be happy with that I think they're so much fucking cooler, and there's so much more to me that you can do with them. I see what the big the guys do with the big dressers. What do they always do? They fucking twenty six or thirty inch fucking wheel. They slam the ass to the ground. They put subwoofers in the shit that you can hear from two miles away, and they're still kicking trebleistics. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. You hear them pull into Rebel Road, you can hear them from three blocks away, but there's no bass in that shit. They're kicking trebleistics like a motherfucker playing like the Eagles and shit when they pull up. Yeah. Tony Whaley's Street Glide. Okay, I thought it was an Ultra. Uh, I, I love Tony's bike. I love the color of that thing. And, and Ultra is the dresser. The Street Glide is the smaller version of that. All Just I like know. You, for my bike, you got the Road Glide and the Road Glide Ultra. 
There's a street glide and an electric light ultra. There's the dresser version of the street glide, kind of. And as much as I love uh, the naked bikes, if I had to go buy a new one tomorrow, I'd have a real hard time. It would it would probably still be a bagger. Uh, I'm a big guy, right? So the baggers just look better under me. You put me on on a, on a little naked bike, and and it just it kind of looks like I'm running down the highway with a mini bike stuck in my ass crack. Um, so they everything tends to look like a grom under me, unless it's a full bagger. Um, so if I had to buy a bike tomorrow, I'd probably be torn between the MGX 21 by Gucci and the Indian challenger, which I rode last God, what was it? November, December. And that thing was amazing, amazing performance, amazing wind protection, fucking incredible stereo and GPS system. The whole infotainment system was just absolutely fucking incredible. The bike was it was it was like a religious experience, man. I think I found God that day, it, it, and it was thank God that it had a Victory power plant in it because that fucker was fast. Craig Van, Triumph's got an adventure bike that I've kind of taken a liking to. The thing is taller than heck. It's actually made for people our size, where our knees won't scrape the ground when we're trying to ride, and it looks like it would actually be comfortable for our legs. Oh, the Triumph so Tiger. Tall. Yeah, but they have a, I think it's a Tiger. They have a real tall version of that that I've been checking out. I've seen pictures of it. I know. Larry Welsh and Joel Pierre Lemieux, when they post videos and photos of their adventure rides, I, I, I get a little hard. I, I think those adventure bikes are just too fucking cool. And I had that V Strom 1000, but it had 78,000 miles on it. I just didn't, I didn't, I don't know. I, I wanted to get something that was a little newer, whether it was a, a Gucci V85 TT adventure bike. Or, you know, the KTM 1190, which if you want to see what speed is, holy shit, Dave. Uh, I mean, if you really want to feel what fucking speed is, get your ass on one of those KTM 1190 adventure bikes. That son of a bitch will hit 60 in less than three seconds. I want to say it's 2.8 seconds. And it is, it, it, your fucking face peels back. That is no bullshit. That bike is absolutely... I forget what kind of bike Ron Pages has, but when we were down south last summer, and it really surprised me how much he could pull away from me. And I was getting on my bike, and I've got a 117. Mm. And, I mean, I, there's no way I could keep up with him in a straightaway. He could walk right away from me. Yeah, it's... Well, and that, that would have been the same thing even with my V-Strom 1000. Dude, that, that bike... Those bikes are so fucking fast. They're amazing, incredible. Uh, Ron Page has got, says just Triumph Adventure. Um, yeah, they're just absolutely incredible. They, they really are. They're, I mean, if you want to get into speed and comfort, like to me, the, the adventure bikes, they're just a great all-around bike. You can't go wrong with them. You go off-road, you go on-road, you... You go fast, you go slow. They've got all the torque and power you need for whatever. They're just fucking awesome. I'm not so crazy about the, the winter looks, we but... just had is perfect for would have been perfect for one. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um. And and yeah, the Triumph makes a great fucking bike. I, I don't care what it. I, I just don't care who you are. That's the Triumph makes. Fuck yeah, great old bad, bad, bad old bike years. boy. What was that? They've been around for years. I mean, my dad had the old 650 Purple Horny Triumph. That was the first bike I ever burnt my leg on from the exhaust pipe. I really want to try out the Triumph Rocket 3 with the 2500 cc. Uh, Shade oh Tree, God. Shade Tree Surgeon has one, and it's white with like tan racing stripes. And I mean, he does most of his videos. The guy's a master of gaining a YouTube audience, like. We've been uploading to YouTube for, I think, three or four months. We're at a whopping 200 subscribers. This guy's got fucking, I'm pretty sure he's well over 100,000. And he said the success, the key to getting a good YouTube channel for bikers, all you have to do is get a mid-80s or late-80s Harley, and you will never run out of content, viewers, or subscribers because that is the shit that people look up on YouTube. And he, he, the guy's a master, he, you know. 
I think he's driving an old FXR. Uh, and then he's also got his Triumph Rocket 3. But for I think for the video's sake, and you know, because it gets him so many fucking viewers, that old FXR, it looks like he's having a blast on it. He put a, a Huffy pad across the handlebars off a Huffy bike. And I laugh every time I watch one of his videos because of that. Uh, I don't know. And the guy's a lot of fun. I really can't wait to get him on the show. But uh, Dave, I'm afraid we are going to have to call it a night, buddy. All right, let's see. I've been on the phone with you for almost 45 minutes, my friend. And I appreciate that. And that's what I appreciate about you. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll check in with you again soon. I don't soon. care what your wife said. You're a nice guy. Yeah, you can't always listen to her. You just can't. You guys, uh, thanks thanks for joining us, Dave. For those of you listening at home, hit the All About the Ride page. You want to get on there. Dave is Dave and John Edwards, the folks over at All About the Ride, they're wonderful. You want to ride with them if you can. They have a lot more. They do the Sunday fun day thing of fucking religiously. Thanks for the shout out. Hey, you guys, we wouldn't be shit without you. I'll tell you that right now. So thanks for thanks Thank for calling in, Dave. We'll talk to you soon. You're welcome. Ride safe, buddy. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, Sharon Laper, wouldn't even consider riding my Indian vintage without a windshield. Yeah, yeah, you got a point there. Windshields definitely make all the difference in the world. They, they truly can. Uh, I've never had one on any of my naked bikes. But I, I was kind of looking at getting a, I don't know, was it a victory uh, hardball? And I wanted to get a, a windshield that could pop on and off real quick and easy. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining us. As always, we love having you guys hang out with us. If you did enjoy the video and you're watching on YouTube, please click like, click subscribe. It's going to help us big time. And if you're watching on Facebook, please keep in mind that our days are probably numbered on, uh, on Facebook. They're just getting too fucking weird over there for us. So we're going to be trying to migrate over to YouTube and move our whole audience over there. Okay. Uh, anybody wants to get their own hooligan shit like what I'm wearing here, the sweatshirt, the hat, uh, hit the hooligan nation on Facebook or hooligans, motorcycle enthusiasts on Facebook, scroll to the top of the page, click on the announcement tab. There you're going to find the hooligan store. You can get your shit there, or you can send a private message over to Tracy Burroughs, Marin Tet. Thank you guys all for joining us. We love you. Stay safe. Keep the sticky side down. And we will see you back here Sunday night.